Calm with Horses, um, debut feature from Nick Rowland, adapted by wrote, writer Joe Murtau from the story by from a story by Colin Barrett in the Young Skins collection. Um, set in a rural island with something of the West Country Western feel of Sam Peckinpah's Straw Dogs, which has got you know the Cornish um, uh, epic, controversial Cornish, Cornish epic, but a kind of very interesting atmospheric film. Although this is also shot through from my reading of it with the with a very strong redemptive edge that you would find in similarly equine themed films like Lean on Pete and uh, The Rider. So Cosmo Jarvis is Doug. Arm Armstrong, he's known as Arm, former boxer who now works as an enforcer for the notorious Devers clan. He's basically been seen a way out of the ring by being told, come with us, you know, we'll take care of you, but you'll become our enforcer. He calls them my family. He says, they're my family now. But he's not really family. He's their attack dog. Or, as his ex-girlfriend says, lap dog. Um, he answers to the clicks and whistles of Barry Keoghan's character, who sort of calls him my bro, my best friend, but quite literally goes, you know, calls him like a dog. And um, Arm has this ex-girlfriend who wants to move to Cork. They have a son with autism whose needs can be better dealt with in a school that she has found there. Arm wants them not to move. He wants them to stay close, but for reasons that are more to do with himself and what's good for him than what's good for them. Early on in the film, we see him dishing out a very, very violent beating, almost unwatchably so, but this is not enough for the Devers clan who want worse, who want him to do more. So he's torn, essentially, between his violent occupation and his desire, a failed desire so far, to be a good father. Look, let me tell you, Jack, tomorrow. I take him home there. Just him and me, no, no Devers, no, no nonsense, right? I don't know. I don't think you could cope. It's not that simple. Well, let me show you. Jack loves it here, don't you? He still loves it here. Let me show you what I can... I can take care of him. Try, nurse. Won't be like last time. What would you do? I would find some sort of trouble to get into. Won't we, Jack? That's what I'm afraid of. All right, fine, would you just... just keep an eye on him, will you? And be patient. Yeah, I will do. <laughs> I think this is a really powerful film for a number of reasons. Firstly, because it puts us right in the head and the mind space of its protagonist. Cosmo Jarvis's performance, for me, had something of the physical presence of... You know, Matthias Skernatz in uh, Bullhead, but also the kind of vulnerability, that broken box of vulnerability that Jason Patrick had in After Dark My Sweet, which is a film that was too little seen, actually a very, very good adaptation with a terrific performance by Jason Patrick. It opens with a, a voiceover monologue about a memory of screaming as a child and arms holding the screaming child, not knowing why, but just this is a fundamental memory. And then later on in the film, we return to that image as if it's been flipped over generationally and there is a suggestion within the whole of the story that we are in, we, we are existing within a cycle of violence that is handed down generationally but can also be broken there is a the possibility of an escape from this kind of cycle of toxic violence there is real menace in the the devers clan i mean not least because it's sort of heightened by the way in which the color scheme of the film is very bold and there are whole sections of it which are sort of, you know, red and black nocturnal hues, which give that kind of, you know, hellish, demonic sense, which contrasts very strikingly with these kind of quite bleak daytime exteriors, widescreen, um, and then every now and then these kind of redemptive moments in which you get this lens flare. So the, the everything about the story is told very visually as well as through the performances. There are also, however, moments of absurdist comedy, very much like early Ben Wheatley, in which things, that, which are, you know, like uh, very sort of, domestic horror and anguish against moments of just complete, almost laugh out loud uh, domestic comedy. There is a brilliant score by Blank Mass, which really gets inside the head of the central character. I think that central performance is great because again, we'll come back to this show, don't tell, show, don't tell. 
so much of it is physical. The central character is a man of few words, but everything you need to know about what's happening to him happens through the way in which he holds himself. And again, I would compare that with Jason Patrick's performance again in, in After Dark, My Sweet. And I felt that the whole time that I was watching the film, I was completely immersed in the world of it. There are also some things which you don't expect at all. There's one suddenly high-octane car chase, which is really well done. I mean, really, really well done. Kind of almost, you know, you don't expect it to be there at all. So you've got all these separate elements living side by side. And I, I thought it was a fully immersive experience, and I was completely, completely involved and engrossed in the world of the film. 